Hey everyone, welcome to this weekend solar eclipse sidereal astrology forecast for July 19th to the 21st of 2020. All right, so solar eclipse time, time of new beginnings to our life path, both personally and collectively for the next six months. Now the solar eclipse will be right in between Taurus and Gemini. If you're expecting me to say Cancer just then, be sure to check out the link down below. We are using the visible sky called True Sidereal Astrology. All right, so time of new beginnings with the North Node, great time of setting new intentions as we get into July. We do still, of course, have a lot of retrogrades. Both the dispositors of the solar eclipse are retrograde, Mercury and Venus. So good to be flexible up until about mid-July in regards to these new beginnings. But nonetheless, new beginnings with our resourceful side with Taurus and practical side with Gemini. This is the part of the sky that deals with Orion, which um, is about the more natural, the more physical aspects of the human experience, which is great to develop moving forward. We do have a square to Mars with this as well, so good to be aware of any type of over or under extremes with the assertive initiating side of ourself, which has already been the theme here for the past few weeks. All right, so let's take a look at all this here in more detail when we return. All right, so here is the chart for the solar eclipse. So the solar eclipse itself will be on Sunday, July 21st at 0240 in the a.m. Eastern time of the Americas, if you do want to make that calculation. But for all intents and purposes, it will be around that Sunday time period. And as we do approach Sunday, we are still finishing up the current cycle. So it is good to let the energies die down to finalize things from the previous lunar month and maybe start to see what new beginnings are starting to come out of this, which will likely take us into next week and really officially once we get to mid-July, once these dispositors of Mercury and Venus do go direct. Dispositors are the rulers of the solar eclipse in this case because it's right in between Taurus and Gemini. Um, these are the rulers. Mercury rules Gemini, Venus rules Taurus. Once they go direct, we'll probably notice more forward moving momentum with the eclipse. But notice that I didn't say the solar eclipse was in Cancer and that's because we are using the visible sky. If you were to look at the solar eclipse and look at the constellations behind it, you will see it right in between Taurus and Gemini. So again, for more information, do check out that link down below using the visible sky called True Sidereal Astrology. All right, so let's take a look at this interpretation. We have this total solar eclipse, very important time for new beginnings, especially because it deals with the North Node in this case, which is also about newness. And the newness is particularly to our life path. Some might call it our future karma, some might call it our dharma, which is the further development, the future development, and things we can grow towards and improve towards and really learn through experience towards. So in this case with Gemini and Taurus, this is really the most physical part of the sky, you could say. It will be right above the arm of Orion, right? So not contacting it because it's involving the sun, but very close to that arm of Orion, which really deals with the more physical aspects of ourself. Once we do get to the December eclipse, which will be six months from now, that's going to be involving Ophiuchus, which is the healer archetype. A lot of you on the channel do hear me talk a lot about Ophiuchus, which is about healing, transformation, personal empowerment. This is the more spiritual part of the sky. But this one here with Taurus and Gemini, the more physical, right? So great time of setting new intentions with the Taurus side, which is the resourceful side. This has already been the theme for over the past month and a half with all these fast movers in Taurus, which has been about developing our inner strength, our inner resources, natural gifts, natural talents, all those inner resources that we can further develop with this eclipse. Now Taurus on an external sense does deal with the more natural world. So it's been and will continue to be a good time of maybe connecting to nature or having more abundance or more resources in our life, beauty, aesthetics, comforts, right? Really good to get into that natural side of Taurus, both of those inner and outer resources. Now, the Gemini side of it is all about the practical, right? Gemini involves the mind, it involves synergy in our life. So also with this, a new beginning with maybe gaining knowledge, gaining information, and also possibly communication, getting into that more communicative and exchanging side of ourself, right? So again, very physical part of the, 
of the sky involving the resourcefulness of Taurus and the practicality of Gemini, the mind, right? The human, so to speak, is this very natural being, which is Taurus, but also this very rational, thought-based, right, and communicative and social being, which is the Gemini side. So it's about developing the more human, physical side of ourself, both in the natural and practical realms moving forward. All right, so with this new beginning, we do have a square up to Mars, which is really something we've already been experiencing. We've had these squares to Mars over the past few weeks. And so in this case, just a reminder that it has been a good time to find the healthy ways of taking action and initiative and asserting ourselves in our life, right? Squares to Mars can sometimes be over extreme, too much aggression, too much intention, too much assertiveness, or sometimes not enough inaction, apathy maybe, right? So with this new beginning, a great way of cultivating it is to ask ourselves, how can we find that healthy expression of Mars? How can we take initiative, action, assert ourselves, but at the same time, be non-attached or as non-attached as we can to our needs, right? And especially with Mars in Pisces, this is all about having a more flowing nature to how we're taking action. Right, so for about the past week, we've had Mars shift into Pisces, which has been softening that fire energy, or at least that's a good way of doing it, right? Instead of swimming upstream, like fighting the current, Mars in Pisces is best for going with the current, putting action and energy towards where the flow is in life, towards what our ideals and our dreams are, and towards that more intuitive, spiritual approach to things. Right, so having more of a peaceful, receptive, accepting approach to those needs, to those desires that Mars represents. And especially if that could be put action towards regarding ideals, things important on a spiritual level for us, this is a great way of working with what will be a very long Mars transit of Pisces. He'll go retrograde later this year and will be in Pisces all the way until mid January of 2021. All right, so very important there with that square to Mars to do that in healthy and constructive ways with being receptive, spiritual ideals to cultivate, great way of working with this new moon. Now, I don't normally talk about these, but there's a minor aspect called the quincunx or in conjunct that's going to be taking place with Saturn. And this is the green line here. Don't normally talk about them because they are minor aspects, but I do feel like this one will be important since these are the only two aspects with the new moon. So this in conjunct with Saturn represents that there is this awkwardness with structures. There's been this whole restructuring that's been taking place here in 2020, both collectively and in our personal lives. And so now the challenge is, is how to continue to do that. It might be a bit awkward. The quincunx is very different. It's uh, very different energies, right? Some would argue that the opposition is the most different, but actually oppositions are <clears throat> the same spectrum, the same axes, like Taurus and Scorpio both deal with values. <clears throat> but the quincunx is when they're next to each other, next to the opposition, which is a very different energy. Think about how different Sagittarius is from Taurus, <clears throat> right? Very different. So how can we do that? How can we build these structures build upon things through time, through patience, through responsibility in a way that might be a bit clunky or awkward with this new beginning, but still nonetheless good to take that patient, long-term and disciplined approach to things, right? Could be a great way of working with the solar eclipse as well. All right, everyone. So, but that's the most important thing is this time of new beginnings to our life path. Sit with the energy. Again, the eclipse won't be until about the 21st till Sunday. So we are going to be ending the current cycle and starting a new one. And we want to give it plenty of time, especially with these planets who rule uh, Taurus and Gemini being retrograde. Right. So Venus will, will go direct on June 26th and then Mercury will go direct on July 11th. So giving it until about mid July would be a really good way of working with it. You know, new beginnings, but be flexible. Try new things. Experiment. Retrogrades aren't a time of sitting back and just waiting. It's a time of experimenting, getting in the mud getting our feet wet, experimenting, making mistakes, being willing to make mistakes, right? Setting up a situation in our life where we can make mistakes and learn new things, right? That would be a great way of working with really not just the retrogrades, but this North Node eclipse as well, because the North Node is about making mistakes. It's about trying new things. It's about experimenting 
and getting outside of our comfort zone a little bit. All right, but again, it's dealing with the physical aspects of ourself, of the resourceful and practical sides of life. Now we do have some, um, some aspects taking place with this. Uh, most importantly, Mars is gonna be sextiling Jupiter and has been sextiling Pluto. So nothing major with this, but again, that Mars energy, that active assertiveness, we could be maybe approaching Sunday feeling a little bit open-minded about what we can take action towards, or maybe seeing an ideal or seeing a potential or an opportunity of some kind, right? So feeling a bit buoyant and open-minded. So that's great. If you are feeling that, it is a great weekend for finalizing things, right? So it'll be the lowest energy phase until Sunday to finalize things, but nonetheless, maybe do some active things, maybe set some goals in terms of completing things from the previous cycle, All right, Stuff like that could be good. All right, and then of course the sun will pass over the north node leading up to it, which will be on Friday, but again, that's just the north node of the eclipse. So in this case, yeah, maybe around Friday, starting to get some insights in regards to what some of these new beginnings might be about. All right, so that's the uh, forecast, the solar eclipse forecast in a nutshell. Again, 0 to 40 Eastern time of Sunday. That's Eastern time of the Americas. And so as we approach that, letting the energies of the previous cycle die down to finalize, to complete, and slowly sit with this energy going into Sunday regarding what new might be arising from this. New perspectives collectively, perspectives about where we can put our energy, experiment, try new things, and in this case, great to do so with our resourceful side, what requires inner strength, inner resources, and also connection to nature and beauty in the outer world. And what pulls on our willingness to learn with Gemini, to use our minds, to think, to gain knowledge, information, and then externally to communicate, right? Maybe doing things that involve learning, reading, writing, right? Things of that nature, <clears throat> even business, trade, things like that, practical stuff really good to slowly develop. Give it plenty of time of reconsideration with the retrogrades, flexibility, trying new things, and remembering that healthy expression of how to balance out that initiative, action, our needs and desires in conscious and constructive ways, <clears throat> and in ways that are geared towards what's important on a soul level and spiritual level there. All right, so everyone have a fantastic solar eclipse. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to click that like button if you haven't yet. Now down below, I will put which house this is for each of the sidereal signs. So if you do know your sidereal sun, moon, or ascendant sign, you can check down below to see which area this solar eclipse, or actually which areas this solar eclipse will be taking place for you. But uh, yeah, take a look at that. If you're new to the channel, subscribe for more daily videos, and I'll see you all next time for the next daily forecast. Take care.